Waka 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 what's up and welcome back to the channel for yet another FC Finch discussion video. It has been a while since I've done one of these and since we're waiting on some new items to come in, I figured this would be a fair way to post some relatively relevant content, keep the algorithm happy and keep views flowing and you know traffic within the channel, all that good stuff. Uh, so today's topic is top five criteria that I have for a Transformers figure. Uh, and I picked it because we've had a lot of recent figures coming out uh, that I see people praising and criticizing for various reasons. And this is tales as old as time for pretty much any hobby that involves collecting any sort of thing. Uh, you know how it goes. Um, a perfect example is the forthcoming fans toys, Gary. I for, don't get on me about how that's pronounced. I'm going to be saying it like that way during the review anyway. So I do apologize. Uh, but he is a newly released figure um, that I see people criticizing and praising for various reasons. And again, I say newly released because apparently he's been in Fans Toys Pipeline for some time, so the design isn't all that new. Um, but, you know, typical Fans Toys, uh, the paint, it looks great, paint looks good, it's probably going to have that premium weight to it, uh, but no ab crunch from what I see. Uh, no waist swivel from what I see on a $200 figure. Now I'm gonna come out right and say that there is no wrong answer for this. In fact, both sides are probably right. Each one of us has a preset outline of attributes that we value in a premium grade figure. Uh, different people have different tastes, who knew? Uh, so I'm gonna be talking about my personal top five favorite attributes in the video today. And you can let me know yours down in the comments below or even criticize mine. This hobby is a great melting pot and we aren't always going to agree on everything. Um, before we get into it, I uh, just want to state as usual that I'm sticking to Masterpiece figures. That's what I collect. Uh, and I feel like the discussion can get a bit too convoluted if I start going multi-line. Uh, but again, if you collect Legends or Mainline, feel free to let me know in the comments your personal uh, criteria for that very circle. Or let me know why you don't personally collect Masterpiece. Um, so let's get into the video. Uh, my top five criteria, what I look for when buying a Transformers figure. As always, like, subscribe. Subscribe. It helps me out. I greatly appreciate that. Let's get into the video. And let's start with the super secret runner up sixth category, which is going to be accessories. And if you've seen a lot of my reviews, uh, you should know that it's no surprise that I do value the accessories a figure comes with. In fact, I've even passed on some figures just because of the lacking of accessories, or should I say character appropriate accessories. Um, now, the way that my collection goes is I display it. I do mess with my figures from time to time. For the most part, a lot of my figures, they sit in a display case for months at a time, even a year in some cases. You know, in some of these videos, some of these figures haven't moved for quite a while. That's how I enjoy my collection. I come into my office. I just look. I have my nostalgia trip, and I have a good day. And I feel like the part of the display is having the appropriate accessories to display them with. Uh, a big example of this is I don't want bots like Perceptor and Grab to have just guns to display them with. They barely did any shooting in the shows. They were science bots. They were engineering bots. I want to display them doing science and engineering things. The Seekers and other flight bots are a perfect example as well. I want to display these bots flying, moving, doing stuff that they did in the show. Uh, I like having flight stands to display this. In fact, I've slammed some figures for not having an appropriate set of flight stands. So uh, again, having the accessories, having an appropriate display for a figure is almost just as important as having the figure itself for me. So on to the real list with number five, and at the, at the top of the list, or should I say bottom, because these are in uh, ascending order, it's going to be articulation. And uh, this is a big thing for a lot of people in this segment, I know. Uh, again, uh, it's masterpiece. We should have it all, especially at this price point, and we don't in many cases. Uh, so instead of explaining what why I value articulation, because I'm almost positive a lot of my reasoning is going to align with yours, uh, I'm going to explain why I don't value it as highly as other factors. Um, so the idea, the goal of my collection is to build a more modern version of G1, something more tune accurate, something better appointed, 
than what I had as a kid. And I'm not, tr I'm trying not to slam G1, but let's be honest, guys. Uh, G1 toys really weren't the greatest in the articulation department, even by 80 standards. In fact, a lot of them were basically bricks with minimum articulation. Th that is what it is. You know, it's by design for the time they were great and they just aren't anymore. Um, and that's honestly what I'm trying to build. So I am, as such, I am willing to forego things like lack of an ab crunch or lack of a waist swivel uh, because simply, you know, we didn't really have it at G1. So, you know, if you're going to give me a, you know, moving, a completely moving arm or a full set of moving legs, hell, I am on board with that. And as long as I could get six to 10 relatively cool or natural poses out of a figure, um, then honestly, I'm good with that. And I can achieve that with pretty much all the figures in my collection. If you want to see uh, the figures in various poses, I do a short uh, for every figure that I review. And uh, that usually includes, uh, you know, picture of them in poses. You can check out my Instagram as well. I'll put a link in the description to my shorts uh, down below uh, just so you can see all the poses that I get my characters in. That's honestly more than good enough for me. Moving on to number four, and that's going to be aesthetics. I suppose we could jump button bundle a smidge of cartoon accuracy into this as well. Um, so to, to explain, a lot of my collection, as you know, is mostly G1, uh, with some pockets of the live action movies here and there, you know, based on what my preferences are. Um, to that end, I don't 100% need a figure to be absolutely cartoon accurate. In fact, as long as the figure itself has a unquestionable, distinguished, uh, rel distinguished likeness to the character it's representing, I am good with a manufacturer, be it to Carl or another third party, taking some various liberties, uh, depending on what they are. Uh, in my opinion, if it looks like it like a duck quacks like a duck, uh, then it works as a duck for me. And you've seen this in a few of my reviews, especially with fans' toys, Hoist, or their Cyclonus. Uh, you know, not 100% representative of the character, uh, but they just make a version that I personally am willing to accept. And again, you know, not to bash G1 here, uh, but there's some cartoons design cartoon designs that I quite frankly didn't like in the cartoon. So I am more than happy to see a manufacturer try to make a more a version of the character that is more appealing to m what I enjoy. So we're at the halfway point with number three, which is going to be paint. And uh, I was going to have this a lot higher on the list until I realized that I do collect quite a bit of Ocular Max, which uh, don't have that much in the paint department, but that's okay. I like them for different reasons. I also like Ocular Max as a company. Um, but that being said, and this is a big thing for collectors in general in the Masterpiece segment. Uh, we pay a premium price and paint should be a no-brainer on pretty much every figure. Uh, that to me is one of the factors that screams uh, this is a premium product. And me, I'm personally after the pearlescent, the glossy, the metallic style paint, those liberties uh, that we talked about in number four. And I get that that doesn't resonate with everybody, especially somebody looking for a more tune accurate collection. The cartoon had a lot of the more, you know, muted colors and that's totally fine if you prefer that. But me, uh, the glossy metallic paint, that reflects the premium price tag that I pay for the figure, and that's what I want with figures that I collect. Um, furthermore, uh, my collection is in my living room. Next to the kitchen, this is pretty much the highest traffic area of the house, um, and we get a lot of visitors, and not everybody is familiar with the figures. Not everybody's familiar with the lore, uh, but I want to have something that is not just appealing to my eyes, but just looks cool on a more broad scale. So again, I think that a proper coat of paint really helps with that look. So this brings us to number two, which is going to be design. And we're going to kind of lump transformation in with that, as that is a big factor of a Transformers toy design. And this one should come as no surprise. Um, I buy my Transformers to transform. In fact, you can check out my rules for collecting video that I made a few months ago. Uh, I'll put a link in the description down below where I did kind of touch on this a little bit. Um, so that being said, uh, having a figure with an appropriate transformation that isn't 
isn't overly torturous is a big thing for me because I do flip these figures back and forth multiple times, especially for reviews or vi different various pictures. Uh, I don't want some overly torturous transformation that bends thin plastic over plastic. I don't want to have ominous locations to store limbs without any proper direction. I want just enough slop to be accurate and allow for any minor mess ups. Um, so, and not just having a proper transformation. In fact, this is probably going to give a hint away as to what number one is, uh, but I want a figure that is up to the task of multiple transformations and multiple movements. I just don't want to immediately collapse on itself after a handful of transformations. So number two going to be design. We'll get to number one real quick coming up here. And here we're at number one, and we kind of hinted at this with design, but our number one factor is going to be materials. This is the factor that I consider most when buying a figure. Uh, again, paying a premium price, the figure should best be made of premium materials, the die casts, the sturdy plastics, all of that uh, need to be incorporated into a masterpiece grade figure uh, for me to consider buying. And I'm not just talking about the incorporation of die cast or beefy plastic. It needs to actually have proper utilization. And I think a good case in point example of this is the MS-02EX, a great figure. Don't get me wrong, uh, but you know, it incorporated the die cast in the lower legs and in the chest. Chest. And in turn, uh, it lost some posability over the standard MS-02. I could no longer do a full-on kicking pose uh, with the MS-02 EX because it did not support the ratchets in the upper thighs. It didn't upgrade any of that. So again, Dur that goes back to that design aspect that we talked about in number two, uh, you know, when they design this figure and they put this die cast in, they have to consider all the hardware into support it. You know, we talked about transformation as well up in item three, and if a panel is being flipped over and over again or being used as load bearing, it best be beefy and structurally sound. And of course, the final additional factor uh, with materials is weight. Uh, again, I want my premium product to not only look good, but have the weight to back it up. So that's going to be about it for my list of top criteria I consider when purchasing a Transformers figure. And I know those, there was a few I didn't mention. Uh, scale and price are two of them. Uh, but let me know in the comments, do these mean something to you? Uh, do you agree with my list? Do you disagree with parts of my list? Or just tell me your personal list of criteria in the comments below. What are some factors of a figure that you are willing to overlook in favor of others. Again, uh, this game is all about compromises. There is no one size fits all answer, contrary to what some collectors might want to say. And uh, that's going to be about it for this video. So you guys know what to do at this point. If you found this video mostly fun, maybe a little bit informative, do me a favor, hit that like button down below. I greatly appreciate it. It does help me out. Also, if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, I encourage you to consider subscribing, if, especially if you like discussions like this or just want to see some reviews of figures both new and uh, old as well. Uh, we do have quite a lot of new content coming in in the next week or so here, so uh, definitely uh, be cool to stick around for that. Thank you so much to the 650 or so of you that have stuck with me all this time. It doesn't go unnoticed. I do greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for making me a part of your collecting journey. I have been and always will be FC Finch. Good night.